So we are here to talk to members of the uh, Hardstuck team, and where where else would you start apart from at the top? You know. So we're talking to the man behind it all, Mr. Mighty Teapot. You know how how did you actually get into gaming, Teapot? Like way taking it way back, right? Get into gaming. Getting to gaming. Well, you know that the story of that is an exciting one, actually. Um, so we've got a, a sort of introduction into to your gaming, but what sort of brought you to Guild Wars 2 and uh, Guild Wars 2 specifically? I kind of, I kind of like the game, you know. Um, the, the game is quite good. That's that's what is it. Uh, actually, we haven't really spoken about um, the rating tournaments yet, I think. Uh, what kind of inspired you to kind of do that? Because that is like stuff that we somewhat still do with hardstick nowadays, right? We we organize these big tournaments, big exciting tournaments. Like, where were you like, okay, so you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna organize a, a rating tournament. You know, no one's ever done it before. Where do you start? Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Hardstock Podcast. I'm here with Lynn and Mighty Teapot. Hello. How are we doing? Who's good. going first? Oh, yeah, that's going <laughs> yeah, I'm going first. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Dude. I'm a host. I'm getting. I'm already getting memed by my guest, or our guest rather. Uh, welcome to the Hearts Talk podcast, Pog. Yeah, it's me. I mean, my face has already been on the internet, Snap. Uh, well, what are we actually doing here? Because um, I think this is like all we've prepared. Um, it's kind of like a like a show and tell, and we've shown Teapot, and uh, yeah, now we can we can end the stream. Yeah, it was it. really good, guys. Uh, I'll see yeah. you all in the next one. <laughs> yeah, see ya. I'm really kidding. So we are here to talk to members of the uh, Hardstuck team. And where where else would you start apart from at the top, you know? So we're talking to the man behind it all, Mr. Mighty Teapot. Uh, the boss. Yeah, the, the boss. boss, the big boss, exactly. Hardstuck <laughs> overlord, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. In the interrogation, what do you want to know? <laughs> Well, Lincoln asked the first question. It's, he's got some burning questions. He, he was telling me how he has some burning questions. This is saying more than the questions ever could, right? You just look at the fear right now. Like this, I rule with an iron fist, as you can tell here, right? Like they are actually scared. I'm quivering in my boots. Speak to me. Unbelievable. All right, yeah, yeah. That's, see, that's that's the real story of Hardsight right there. <laughs> We're all in fear to ask him the real serious questions, yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll just start off because after all, you know, uh, Hardstuck, Guild Wars 2 thing. Um, but, you know, you start somewhere. Um, you know, how, how did you actually get into gaming, Teapot? Like way, taking it way back, right? Get into gaming. Getting to gaming. Well, you know, that the story of that is an exciting one, actually. Um, the, the first game I ever played was Command & Conquer, specifically Red Alert 2. And it was at a time where you know when you're when you're three years old you can't get video games right you, you know that's just it's not really a possibility especially when you didn't have like the kind of online markets that we had so a lot of the games that i would get would be games that uh my dad would buy and then he'd bring them specifically he, he'd go to he, you know he did a lot of work in america and he'd bring games back um from the united states right and a lot of that was command and conquer he was really big into real-time strategy he played um you know stuff like warcraft uh command and conquer all that kind of stuff and yeah red alert 2 was the first the first game i ever played uh, and then somewhere down the line you know i wandered into the depths of the internet uh, when that started appearing right uh came across like all the flash games right stuff like one more level mini clip right new grounds all this kind of crazy exactly. stuff right uh then eventually you see RuneScape, right? Oh. RuneScape appears. Adventure Quest appears, right? Oh my goodness me. Uh, and then uh, one time, it was actually my cousins that um, showed me Guild Wars 1 because they were into gaming too, right? And we played RuneScape together um, and we played WoW together, right? And, the, you know, I, I was actually at my grandparents and they brought over the manual for Guild Wars 1. How, that's kind of weird, right? I, I don't know how that happened. But it was yeah. the it was like a man they, the manual was here and I was reading through it I was like whoa this is actually pretty cool yeah look at this look at this thing right you can play a, you can drain energy from people I was like reading through all the role play I was like dude I'm playing elementalist mesmer let's go right I want to be leeching people's magic throwing fire at people and that's honestly the story of Guild Wars uh, you know the Guild Wars and the MMO journey right getting into MMOs was RuneScape Guild Wars one eventually World of Warcraft 
as well. I actually played Girls One before WoW, right? Uh, you know, that was a great experience, you know, like classic WoW, vanilla WoW at the time. Uh, I didn't really understand uh, vanilla WoW. You know, I just basically ran around hunting Kodos on my Tauren Hunter, eventually kind of leveling up a mage as well and just accidentally wandering into a raid. That was pretty funny. Um, I was nine at the time, didn't really know what was going on, but you know what? I was having a good time. I was having fun. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of an interesting story, actually, because funnily enough, I, I I followed somewhat the exact same route, right? Like I I've, I've played like RTS games before. I started off with like stuff um, like Rise of Nations and like Age of Mythology, some other you know types of games, but still some some RTS things. Into like friends at school talking about RuneScape. Then one friend got killed. Uh, funnily enough, he, he got killed in like the the. <laughs> The, the the tree gnome thingy uh, while yeah. fighting like the, the black demon. Oh, the tree gnome uh, village quest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he got killed there, and he lost pretty much everything. Um, and it was like, oh yeah, you know, this game it sucks. I need something else. And then we we played like Silk Road Online, which is like some really I, I don't know. I don't remember much about it. I I remember killing turtles um, in like a pool uh, or whatever. And then yeah, he was like, oh dude, oh, worst, th this Guild Wars thing. It's pretty cool. You know, it doesn't require a sub fee. And then, yeah, after that, he, he started playing WoW. And I was like, oh, dude, I don't have rich parents. My parents can't afford us up. So, yeah, it's kind of kind of interesting. You know, I've already learned something about you today, Teapot. Yeah, we all sort of started go. gaming yeah. in a sort of similar way. I think I started maybe a bit later because, uh, yeah, gaming really wasn't a thing. And when I was really, really young, like, it just wasn't a thing. Like, we didn't even have a computer until I was probably, like, six or seven years old or i wasn't allowed on the computer until i was like you know six or seven years old because they thought it'd like corrupt my brain cells right but then you know they were right yeah and it absolutely yeah. has i mean i'm still yeah. here you know yeah. they were right absolute brain slug nowadays but yeah I, I started in a similar way with playing a lot of runescape but i think i literally just used to log in kill goblins all day or hill giants all day the place where you go in with the bronze key and that's just what I used to do, and just sell the big bones on the Grand Exchange. That's all I used to do for hours. And then I sort of started playing uh, Guild Wars 1 as well. And then I actually recovered my Guild Wars 1 account very recently, my original, like, childhood Guild oh. Wars 1 account. Oh. And it's it's kind of like, uh, it's such a funny little, like, uh, like a, what do you call it? Like a like time bit, time machine almost, you know, like looking at what you used to call your characters. Like, oh my God, the cringe. Nah. The cringe is hilarious. Always Give hilarious. Give us an example. What was your uh, character name? So my main character oh. was, uh, was an assassin. And did you ever have like, uh, were, were you uh, in the era where you had like Go-Go's? You know, like the little plastic toys Wait. called Go-Go's? What? No? Just what the hell is that? <laughs> So they were like what, these little yeah, like yeah. plastic like collectible toys called Go Go's, and so mm -hmm. I named my my assassin the one that I basically played the most after one of those. And then I also had a dervish, and I was obsessed with dragons when I was little. I think that's also why I really liked. I was drawn to MMORPGs specifically because yeah. I was like, dude, mm -hmm. you get to kill dragons. How awesome is that? And so then mm -hmm. my main dervish was called Art of the Dragons. And it was very cringe. That's not even. That <laughs> that's is not, not, not bad. bad. That's not that's even not bad. bad. That's no. good. Are you yeah. serious? And then I, I also... thought we were going to hear something like XX Will Lord XX Bone Slayer, right? Like I, I thought we were getting something like real cringe. Art of the Dragon. That's actually big. That's huge. That's that's the kind of name people want to have, right? Yeah. That, they'd want to take that from you. Yeah. And then also, funny thing, I slash aged my character uh, on my main dervish and main assassin. It took me five hundred hours to beat Nightfall. Just gonna put that out there. Normal mode nightfall as well. So I don't know what I was doing as a wow. kid, but it, it took me uh, a long, long time to get through that campaign. But anyway, that's me out the way. Yeah. So we've got a, a sort of introduction into to your gaming, but what sort of brought you to Guild Wars Two and uh, yeah, Guild Wars Two specifically? I, kinda, I guess I kind of like the game. You know, um, the game is quite good. That's that's what is it, and. Um, I think what's what I've always been really interested in in MMOs is is fighting things. I am a, a man of simple tastes. I like to attack things with the weapons, and that's exactly what Guild Wars Two does really well. And it has a lot of variety. You know, I've um, always really enjoyed PvP games. Right, like the games that I played most competitively have been Real Time Strategy, which is essentially a PvP game, one v one game. Right, specifically StarCraft Two, um, and Guild Wars Two 
it had the best PvP, um, specifically World versus World. You know, I was definitely very excited when Guild Wars 2 came out. I played some of the beta weekends, actually. I was like, dude, wait, this game is really cool. The way the weapons work is really cool. The game feels great to play, um, all that kind of stuff. But what, what actually initially kind of got me to play the game a lot was World versus World. It was actually what I played the most of. Um, you know, obviously, you know, um, now, you know, we do a lot of raiding. We do a lot of kind of everything, right? Like, um, uh, is is what I play in the game, but back then I, I almost exclusively played uh, PvP and World versus World. Actually, uh, Dagger Dagger Elementalist, Selly Dagger Dagger Elementalist. That's some good content there. True disciple of CMC, yeah. uh, and it it, it kind of went from there. Like uh, you know, and the the thing that kind of really cemented this, weirdly enough, was was absolutely the content creation. Right, I, I actually use if you look at my YouTube channel, the really old stuff there. You've got some StarCraft stuff. You've got some League of Legends. You have Dota two popping up, right? You have WoW actually. There's some WoW videos, right? There's there's actually quite a lot of variety. But what really actually cemented um, that oh I'm you know Guild Wars two it was actually that um, I started to make some videos about the game and people really liked them actually. Um, and uh, a guy called Rengaru, really nice guy, also a Command & Conquer fan. Exquisite taste in both content creators and videos, but also video games. Uh, and he posted this video to the Guild Wars 2 subreddit. And this is actually crazy, right? This is going to sound super weird. I actually didn't even know what Reddit was at the time. I didn't know what that was. And people were commenting, um, this video got posted on Reddit. Right, and I was like, "What is that? I don't know what that is." Yeah. Right, and so I, I negotiated my way to the subreddit, and I go like, "Whoa, everyone loves this. There's loads of people here. Like, this is really cool. These are some really cool people." And then I started making more and more videos, and that's what like ultimately kind of uh, got me like more and more attached to the game was the content creation element, that kind of community thing, that making something, right, creating something uh, that people enjoy is something that I really, really like, and and that's what I found success with, and that definitely influenced my uh, decision to uh, play a lot of Guild Wars Two because um, you know I love gaming, right? I love just playing games and you know fighting bosses and battling other players and trying to get better and all that kind of stuff. But I, I've always been very, very interested in making stuff right and you know like it, it, you know i like making i like making videos like silly videos um or, or like you know uh, making programs right like making little mini games right i was messing around with code and roblox and so on right i you know i love stuff like uh, you know all the lego mindstorm stuff that you could have like the electronic sets right that that's what i've always really liked and uh, kind of content creation and and ultimately even hard stuff, right building communities it's an extension of that right uh, and that's that's kind of the, the next level of me that makes it really really enjoyable uh, and i guess the final nail in the coffin was actually heart of thorns because that's when i actually started streaming a lot and uh, playing the game a lot more actually was heart of thorns when raids came out um because i'd raided in wow right but i hadn't really played pve in guild wars 2 weirdly enough not much um and uh when raids came i was like dude these are this is sick it's actually insane like the first week, we I, I was grinding like six hours every single day trying to kill Veil vale Guardian. It took us a week. Like we killed it on we killed the day before reset. <laughs> I was on full nights tank reaper. Like even then I was jailed on tank because like you know, we had we, we had like a we had different players every day, right? Because you know, I didn't have like a group or anything like that. It was actually a group of streamers. I was raiding with Jebro and Leviathan and stuff like this, some real old school faces um in the content creation scene. It was just like it was like random people. So obviously the fr the thing about it was it didn't feel that bad at the time because it was so new and fresh, but we were literally like reprogressing every day, right? Yeah. Because um we had new people. So it was like, wait, hang on a minute, these people have no idea what they're doing. And everyone was playing like scuffed builds and like yeah. really scuffed, like everything was scuffed, right? It's sort of like the um, wild west then. Yeah. But it it was so good. It was so much fun to clear that, like to yeah. get the boss down. That that actually prompted, you know, actually saying, all right, I'm going to make a community. I'm going to make like a raid guild. Right. I'm going to make a, a group. Of, I'm going to make a stream. I'm going to make a group of gamers. We're going to blast these raids, yeah. hardcore. Now, in some ways, was even the first iteration of Hardstock, right? Like the the legendary guild Mystic Builds, also known as Salt. That's uh... yeah. This is what I was gonna like sort of uh, ask <laughs> Could you do next. a full is, podcast on yeah. that. Was this the, the, was the so that was the the sort of early days of of Salt, right? Because I mean, yeah. Hardstock has sort of been through multiple iterations, uh, and would, so yeah, Mystic Builds being sort of the first one. So what was kind of the the goal with Mystic Builds? Was it just a raid, or was it, you know? Were you ever interested in speed clearing the raids? Was that even a thing back then? Because I mean, I've I've only haven't even been playing the game that long, right? So I don't really know the the true history of of the game, or was it literally just to get the kills? You know, it was very much to get the kills. I I think salt. 
for those who remember it, very much had a. a it, 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 I would. I wouldn't. I would use the word infamous. Okay, is uh, the way I'd go about talking about it. You know, it, it very much. It was a group of players who would just get in there, and they knew that I would keep trying until we got it. Pretty much, no matter what, right? Like. Uh, if people were leeching, if people were bad, I would force them to get the kills, right? This is definitely the forbidden law. Uh, you know, the dark side, for sure. Although it wasn't really like that. It, it was actually like just, you know, I'm kind of playing it up there a little bit. It very much was just a group of friends, particularly a lot of people involved in Twitch culture. Mm. There's a lot of meme culture uh, involved in this particular guild, right? Uh, you know, a lot of silly jokes, right? Um, you know, a, a lot of like spamming gacha muchi, right? All that sort of stuff. That, that's kind of what you're dealing with there with Mystic Bills. But it was actually really cozy. Um, yeah. I, I think that some of my best memories in the game and, and some of my friends today and some of the... Again, Again, like really powerful members that you'll see in Hardstuck are actually from uh, the Mystic uh, the Mystic Builds um, era that you know that uh, that original guild right like there's some proper lifelong friends there a lot of the people you see on my raid team uh, are from that era actually like for the Harvest Temple CM stuff. Do you have a few uh, names by the way from yeah. there. Like a few names. Sorry, say. Do you have like a few a names? Few names? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I think know, right? I think the oldest member actually. It's either Patho or Mike. I think it actually might, it might be it's Patho, actually right? really close. I don't even know. It might be Patho. <clears throat> I don't know who actually hopped on first. I think it was probably Mike and then Patho afterwards. But yeah, like those are the those are probably the two uh, the two really big ones uh, as well. I think Jester is actually from the uh, late Salt era as well. Actually, um, but yeah, yeah, the late Salt era, not the early Salt era. Those would be the main. Uh, the main juices. Yeah. They have Planix like coming in somewhere as well. Um, I think Planix was relatively. Mm. Geodark Geo yeah. Geo is dead. Yeah. Yeah. Planix was actually. Um, I, I, oh, no. I, he's going to he's gonna be so sad because he's absolutely right. Um, uh, you're absolutely right there. Yeah. Planix was potentially even older than Patho or Mike, actually. In fact, that may well be the case because, yeah, you're mm. absolutely right. He played yeah. in the namesake of Mystic Builds, which was a random build tournament, which is actually, yeah. funny enough, that was inspired by something called Ultimate Bravery. I don't know if anyone is aware of yeah, this from the, League of Legends. Yeah. Uh, basically, Ultimate Bravery was this thing that you could basically pick random items and random um, masteries, right? It was a different system. You could random, basically a random build in League, right? And I thought, whoa, that's kind of fun. Because, you know, I used to play League with my brother a lot and, and his friends, actually. And we would do, like, loads of troll stuff, right? We would just meme it up, going crazy. It's actually a, one of my favorite videos, actually, that, that I've made is a video on YouTube about League of Legends where we deliberately die to the blue buff, feed two pentakills, and then start playing, uh, and then actually win the game. It's very funny. It's kind of done in the style of a kind of classic old school ironic montage, yeah. right? With like the Skrillex stuff, you know, just the, the meme stuff, all that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, yeah, you know, that, that was what Mystic Bills was inspired by. It was inspired by this ultimate bravery concept. And yeah, Planix played in this tournament, and it was before I even knew him as Planix. He, you know, he was um, he was known as Geodar CZ. I actually pronounced Announced it as Geo Dark uh, Z because I didn't know that every single Czech player in the game actually adds CZ to the end of their. It, it's actually crazy. It, it's, it's like so a weird, cultural yeah. thing. Unspoken yeah, they, they, yeah. You know, it's it's actually a rule. It's a rule. When you sign up to Guild Wars 2, it says if you are Czech, you have to put CZ at the end of your name, right? It, it's it's actually insane. And yeah, that was uh, when I met Planix as well. And it's it's actually crazy how long some people have stuck around. It was it was some wild, some wild think, ride, yeah. a wild ride. It's been. Seven years, I think. Uh, Patho noted it in the um, the birther letter we sent you uh, recently. I think. So yeah, seven oh. years, long time. Oh, uh, yeah. And then, so like Mystic Builds sort of went, from what I understand, through like sort of multiple. Well, you started branching out into multiple game modes, right? You had the Mystic Builds mm. game mode you sort of created in PvP, and you also had sort of the infamous uh, World versus World guild, right? That you used to like raid with almost daily i, I i've heard that sort of you almost did eight hour streams every day you don't want only world versus world so yeah. yeah would you like to expand on oh. that a little bit <laughs> well and i was going to say you don't want to know because i thought you were almost alluding to like the nine hour demos streams because that definitely happened um but you yeah, know the world versus world era it's it's actually something that i really hope i'll be able to capture again with actually the release of alliances um yeah maybe like the the salt world versus world stuff was probably my favorite time in the entire game actually uh or close to you know i think the comparable stuff would be harvest temple cm now 
right? Mm -hmm. And I am really enjoying, uh, I, I am really enjoying kind of building hard suck and so on. But the world versus world stuff, that is going to be that memory that I have forever right it, it really is like there was such a sense of community and excitement right you know um and, and this is what i really feel is missing in the game actually like everyone was excited to play yeah. i know that sounds weird but that was it was incredible you know yeah. like a very good friend of mine arcane he you know he can quit, quit the game now but very good friend of mine and a certain you know i think a lot of people would have at the time referred to him as my right hand man in fact certainly when it comes to world versus world and every, every friday uh, he would sprint home from work to play Reset with us because Reset was uh, just a little bit, um, you know, it was, it was in the evening, right? It was about, mm. I think, 6 p.m. Uh, in the UK. And obviously, you know, he was working, right? And he would have to run home. He would, like, at maximum speed uh, to actually play. He'd be, like, covered in sweat and ready to sweat even more in World vs. World. It's fantastic. And there was this, this energy, this electricity, right? Yeah. Of, like, yeah, let's go. Let's absolutely go. Let's get into this game and play, right? And that was, that was captured it, with the Salt World vs. World era in a way that I haven't... Uh, I, I've, I've struggled to replicate that mm. over the years. You know, I really want to have that magic again because it was, it was truly the MMO in MMORPG, right? Yeah. It, it was... It felt like a massive community. You know, there was this one time, this is always a good story I find, and I, you know, I kind of feel bad about this, but it was unintentional, so I think it's okay. Uh, in World vs. World, it, it's kind of customary that you let, um, you, you say what borderland you're gonna go on reset, right? Um, you say, I'm gonna go red borderland, I'm gonna go blue borderland. Yeah. And uh, at the time, we just, we just kind of like randomly rocked up, right? And we went to a borderland, and we didn't know this, but a commander from another server had decided to play on this uh, borderland, a guy called Flex Tom. Uh, and we had so many people, we filled the map with our, with our guild, right? It yeah. was literally all 80 people on the map, which is approximately the map cap, were all from our guild, and no one left. Like this poor commander, Flex Tom, he was in queue for three hours before he got in. Yeah. <laughs> that's how many that's how excited people were to play the game yeah. right with with mr bills and play world versus world i mean right? it was uh it was a good time that is like super insane though because i think this was before um server linking even happened right yeah uh wait yeah. no 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 this no was it after? Uh, wait was it no no well no no because we only got into world versus world when server linking because i remember this like mm -hmm. uh, the first time we played world versus world, we, we were complete scrubs right we were just leaping in we were, and I, I met another great friend actually um met, uh, we were linked with ring of fire um we were uh we yeah ring yeah we, it was ring of fire and fissure of woe i believe and we were on seafarer's rest and ring of fire and, and in a way kind of mentored us a little bit it was jack and his guild which was ri uh, at the time right and yeah and it was also oh yeah zoi yeah we met the, the two guilds we encountered and kind of showed us the ropes a little bit yeah, it was jack lee skilled um and it was uh zoi which is just called guild of zoi with the guild leader is known as Zoi as well. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, it was during server linking actually. It's all him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like, uh, you know, then you have like the, the, the World vs. World era, um, like after the World vs. World era, uh, Path of Fire came out. Uh, actually, we haven't really spoken about um, the rating tournaments yet, I think. Uh, you know, the, the, the big three, you know, the ERPs and then the, uh, the ARP. What kind of inspired you to kind of do that? Because that is like stuff that we somewhat still do with Hardstick nowadays, right? We we organize these big tournaments, big exciting tournaments. Like, where were you like, okay, so you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna organize a, a rating tournament. You know, no one's ever done it before. Where do you start? That's the exact conversation I had with Brazil. Yeah. Um. You know, like at the time, uh, Preston, uh, formerly known as Brazil, I was I was just chatting and I was like, dude, we should do a raid tournament. We should just do it. And he was like, yeah, I, I fuck yeah, let's do it. Uh, and the, the inspiration for that, I've, I've always loved esports, been absolutely fascinated with, with any kind of competition, actually. You know, I, I love watching sport, right? Like swimming in particular, right? That's mm -hmm. my chosen sport. Uh, or lifting, weightlifting, powerlifting. And I love esports as well. You know, like in, in particular, I love well produced events. You know, uh, when, I, when I look at my inspiration, I look at a lot of Blizzard tournaments, you know, particularly StarCraft II. Uh, these, this, the magic they produce, like in particular, um, they don't run this anymore, but there was, uh, there's like a, a, the world championship series, right? WCS. And for the grand finals, the global finals, they have these two players head to head 
in a massive arena and they have a projector that is projecting um, kind of textures onto this uh, onto this stage, right? So for example, uh, you know, like the Protoss in StarCraft II are kind of this alien race. They've got a lot of gold glowing crystals and stuff like that. The Terran are mechanical, right? And they're, they've got robots and they're, you know, they're a bit scuffed, right? And Zerg are basically, it bug people, right? Like biological insects. And whenever a Zerg player would win, the entire stage would like become infested with this because the, the projection would change and yeah. it would all turn into a Zerg stage. You have all these colors and these graphics flashing up. It was incredible such an unbelievably immersive experience right and i look at the way they design their overlays and sh convey information to the viewer i love stuff like that mm. um you know i, I love uh, making things viewable and more engaging and i i want the viewer to really get into it and to feel captivated and be able to fully immerse themselves into the competition and that's always been a big part of my inspiration when it comes to content creation and streaming i want to make things that are really cool that are memorable right that people aren't going to forget right um and are going to stick in people's minds like wow that was really cool that was amazing like what a moment um what a moment in the game's history right mm. And I'd like to think that that's what happened with Elitist Raiding Party. I think certainly Elitist Raiding Party three was uh, certainly a bit of a a bit of a, a bit of a marker, yeah. right? A bit of an era for sure, yeah. For, yeah. for Guild Wars two, but yeah, like that stuff. Um, I always love it. You know, I I, I think the the events. Uh, you'll often hear me on stream complaining about like, oh god, you know, it's horrible about my sleep schedule. I'm dying. Oh no, right? But at the end of the day even though they are really hard to produce, they're the things I find the most gratifying mm. to make, right? And um, I really, really like doing them, even though they are a lot of effort and um, difficult to pull off and very expensive. 120K <laughs> gold, by the way, right? Ouch. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's yeah. what I like doing. You know, that's, that's the stuff that I, I'm really having a good time. Like, you know, when I'm working on stuff like that, I'm very, very happy um, for sure. Yeah, so yeah. Like, sort of continuing on from the uh, like sort of tournament thing, we obviously ran Mota two very very recently, and the uh, overlay. Well, do you want to talk about what went into making the overlay? Because obviously it was pretty incredible and a huge sort of surge in in sort of technology for the the PvP scene. You sort of grabbed elements from within the game and managed to sort of put them into a into an overlay format. So do you want to talk about that for a little bit? Yeah. So th this is. I think this actually segues into another topic, actually. Like, um, historically, when I've done events, I have done basically everything myself. Mm. Right? So I've done all the development work, right? I, I've, I've built the overlays on my own, right? I'll, I'll typically have a designer make some of the assets. But broadly speaking, everything is done by me, right? Um, they, you know, like in several tournaments, um, some admins helped me. Specifically, Roy helped out a lot. Now, Anet Roy. Uh, and he was very, very useful. But a lot of it, like a lot of the work was done by me. And that mean, meant that some of it wasn't going to be that good or not as good as I want it to be. I'm not a designer. Can you tell? Uh, <laughs> um, and it's just not a skill that I possess, you know? Um, and that means I've always been very limited in, in what I can do in that regard, right? Um, there are some areas of development and programming that I'm not as familiar with. So it's very hard for me to get into that. And with Hardstuck, those limitations have been removed. Uh, I've been able to work with some, uh, to be frank, just unbelievable, um, unbelievably talented people, right? Um, over the course of Hardstuck. And, you know, the, the motor overlay with Noz, Chocolapic, and Mythos as well uh, for development support. Plenix also made a lot of contributions early on um, with this overlay stuff too, actually. And being able to work with those developers, yeah, there has been a surge. You're damn right. Uh, because all of a sudden we have this crazy pool of incredibly passionate, talented people, right? Um, uh, working on this stuff. And it's taken it to new heights. Absolutely. Yeah, I did a lot of work with uh, Vazberg as well. Like a lot of the animated stuff that you'll see on the stream. Mm. Um, like the the backgrounds, the, you know, the uh, some of the logos, right? The design. Uh, that was done by Vazberg. Haven't worked with Vazberg for a while, actually. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've, got, we've got to get him back into the fold at some point, right? You know, he's, he, you know, he's escaped the orbit of Guild Wars 2. I don't think we can have that. I don't think that's allowed. We've got to lasso him back um, in. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, it really is just, yeah. Like the, the team is very, very good. Um, right now and uh, Master of the Arena 2 I'm very very happy with it yeah like we took um, you know I, I took the lessons I learned with Master of the Arena 1 
um, and we refined uh, the information, we refined the, view, the user experience. And I think we transformed Guild Wars 2 PvP from something that's quite difficult to follow if you aren't familiar with it already. I think we turned it into, a, again, yeah, a fully immersive experience for the year with, a, with an incredible tournament suite. You've got a lot more planned as well down the line, right? Like, uh, uh, we're already working on the next stuff. And, and again, that's only possible because of the team. Yeah. Like, on every tournament I have ever run, it has been brutal. You know, uh, it, it, like it, it's just been, I never want to see this code ever again. In fact, the Master of the Arena code base, it was so rushed and th so hacked together at the last second, it actually broke the day after the tournament. I actually don't know how that happened, but it, the day after the tournament, I press build, doesn't work. It just won't run. Like I just, I abandon it on the spot. And uh, okay. the, the code that we have now, the development we have now is essentially a full rewrite mm. um from the ground up right uh, of uh of the original um tournament setup that we have and we can also apply that to all events and the, the big goal here is to actually allow um, members of the community members of the team to run these events on their own even without uh tech knowledge right like i want to design these tools so that anyone can do this i think uh, lynn has a little bit of experience with this actually because i believe yourself and plenix actually used a slightly scuffed version of this software to run the dragon response mission tournament Correct, yeah. mella did it for the um uh, for the uh SAB, the Super Adventure Box competition as well. And yeah, the ultimate goal of this is to, and MM did it with the uh, Fractal Tournament too, actually. And the big goal of this is to allow this level of production, right? Like this level of immersion to be replicated effort-free um, by members uh, of the community, right? You know, because I, I, I can't run a tournament every single week and I've got to get some of you guys to do that, yeah? Yeah, i got to get you on it. The, the DRM tournament, those were the days. It, uh, hmm. Maybe maybe we should actually get get back into doing stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, like I, it's a lot of work. And uh, to be honest, I I really respect you for sticking with it because, like, you did not one, not two, not three, not four. I think we're are we nearing like ten tournaments at this point? I think so. Right, a lot. One, two, three. Five, we did ERP one, ERP two, ARP one, yeah, ERP four, three. Four, then it was. Four, Motor. Then it was Motor One. Then after that, it was what did we do next? We did a, we did a bunch of them because we yeah, we did a bunch. We did a Hard Suck Conquest League. We done yeah. three Hard Suck Conquest Leagues, right? So that's set. That's we're up to eight now. Then we also did Hard Suck Raiding Party and then Motor Two. So yeah, yeah. you're you're up to right. it was ten. ten. Ten tournaments, I think. Yeah, pretty good. But yeah, uh, those are kind of like the tournaments. But those we we've organized. You know, some we've organized as Hard Suck, but some of them came before. Um, but obviously, like Mystic Builds, it, it had the idea mostly of, you know, like raiding together, organizing the, the little, um, you know, the, the random PvP tournaments. Uh, but yeah, like after that, right, eventually you decide, uh, I think it was like, like after, uh, after ERP3, you, we kind of like, you know, went on like a, a little bit of a day trip to, to WoW Classic. Eventually, you know, we come back and that's kind of when the... The, the full memes started to happen, right? Uh, and it started with Delusional Elitist, previously known as a, as a stream team. But like, how do you, how do you kind of get back into this? Because you, you weren't really feeling very happy with the game, I think. Um, how do you kind of get back to that and coming to the idea of like, yeah, we want to save Guild Wars 2, right? Because that was, I think, the, the original idea for it. So the, I mean, the very original idea for this, this construct right like what hard set kind of is you're absolutely right it was delusional elitist which is a kind of a, a very old meme um from a, a, a very famous youtube content creator in the girls 2 community called nemesis he would uh, refer to a lot of the top players as delusional elitists which i just thought was such an amusing phrase uh but that was actually at a time where i, I was actually very excited about the game um weirdly enough like that oh, wow when was that actually i made a video about it so it is actually beautifully dated um, I'm just going to quickly I remember look it, like, it up, actually, yeah. uh, right now. It was four years ago in 2018. Oh, so what, what was this? Basically, I made a Twitch team, right? I had some artwork commissioned for it, right? I had a Discord made, all that kind of stuff. And it completely flopped. Why? Well... It, well, that's not really true, actually. It, it kind of helped people get a few more viewers because of the auto-host mechanic. Mm. But it didn't, it didn't really do anything. Why? Well, because I was essentially trying to, you know, uh, one-man army it, right? 
which was very, very, uh, very, very forced. Didn't have the, didn't have the energy, right? Didn't have the ability to actually um, maintain it and admin it and run things and make stuff happen. But it, the, the idea was the same. I wanted to build this community of people who were really engaged in the game, particularly in the content creation, particularly in the streaming aspect, streaming end of this actually. Um, and that was essentially the, the seed, the foundation, as it were, um, for, for what Hardzug is. Hardzug is an extension of Delusional Elites. In fact, I just used the same name. The original incarnation, it was the same name. Um, we just, I just changed it later because, ah, you know, like I, I think, uh, you know, want, want a bit of a rebrand, right? Fully fresh start, all that kind of good stuff. Mm. But how did I get to that point, um, of kind of wanting to, uh, do stuff for the game again, like after um, being very unhappy with the game. Ultimately, it was just a full perspective shift. Uh, I went to play Classic WoW for about nine months or so um, uh, after Elite Trading Party 3, because I was very frustrated at that point. I was like, we are being abandoned, which was true. Um, and I was very unhappy with the game. Everyone around me was very unhappy with the game. Let's go have another adventure, right? And played Classic WoW for nine months. And honestly, I, I'm so happy I did, right? Like the, the game was an, another really unforgettable business. Made, something, made some really, really cool people, made some great friends there uh, in Classic. I still play the game to this day, actually, yeah. uh, because it really is a whole lot of fun. In fact, I'm recently doing like a, a full playthrough of the game with a few friends, actually. We're going to try and get to 60 without dying. It's uh, going very, very well. Uh, one of us already died to a level six boar. You know, these things do happen. The boars can win. Uh, but, you know, th that aside, just being away, uh, uh, being away from the game, just, you know, kind of just allowed me to get some perspective, right? Um, you know, I was able to go, okay, the game isn't perfect, but you know what? I think I can still have fun. I still like Guild Wars 2, right? Um, and I think the way I'm going to have fun is by embracing what MMOs are all about, which is community, which is that social aspect, which is trying to build something. I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to set myself some goals, right? Let's ch let's challenge ourselves, right? And a big part of that is actually, uh, oh, sorry, rather, like a big part of Hard Circuit is that, right? I want to see if I can do it. Like, is it possible to actually um, kind of energize the community? Is it possible to actually uh, create content like this to get regular tournaments, to have an amazing website with incredible guides on it, to have a vibrant Discord community of gamers who are all coming together to learn about the game um, from all walks of life all over the world, right? Um, and in every different game mode. Is that possible? Um, is that doable? Can I do that at the same time as streaming and building the streaming community as well and trying to get people into content creation and making content creation fun and raising the bar for quality? Is all of that possible? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the mission, right? Like, and I think that's really important when you, um, to enjoy video games. I think that's what we all lacked like during the dark ages of Guild Wars 2, kind of that 2019 era, um, was we were aimless. Right, like Anet weren't communicating with us. They weren't. There, there was no new raid in sight. We kind of everyone knew in their heart of hearts that raids were essentially dead content, right? And there weren't going to be any more. Like Wing Seven was a little disappointing in terms of difficulty and some of the design elements there as well. Um, you know, the living story wasn't super hot. It was pretty repetitive at that point. Like you know, this was kind of during the. This is during the time where Arena were working on a lot of side projects that kind of had Guild Wars 2 a bit on the back burner. Yeah, it was a dark time. Like, a lot of people were very unhappy with the game and were very aimless. We're, you know, we're just flailing around wildly. And I think that by kind of centering myself and picking a goal and picking a mission, that was what allowed me to... Um, to really enjoy the game more than I have pretty much ever, right? You know, the only thing I'd compare uh, compare this to actually would be, um, again, the Salt World versus World days. Other than that, this is absolutely top tier. You know, I, I'm genuinely really enjoying the game and I'm excited to get up and start grinding work on hard stuff, like working on the website. And just before this, I was working on a Herald guide, okay? Uh, you good know, build. moving some water. Yeah, good build. Quickness Herald, let's go. I was working on that. And, you know, I'm excited to do that. You know, I want to do more. I can't wait. Um, to, uh, you know, to, to get to work on more of this stuff because it's exciting, right? You know, it's, it's, we've, I've got a goal, I've got a mission. And like that, in my opinion, is really key to enjoying any video game, actually. You, you've got to have a mission, at least for me anyway. You know, I need, I need a quest. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's a big thing that people often tend to miss, right? The moment they become demotivated with a game is because they don't know what to do next. And it can be as small as they've reached level 10 in a game and they don't they get lost and then they become demotivated because mm. they don't know where they're going. Or if they've reached the end game, they've completed everything, or they feel like they've completed everything, and then they don't they have no idea where to put their efforts in next. And I think it's amazing that you sort of channeled it into this uh, like hard stuck uh, community. And this, I was going to ask you about why did you 
uh, make it become sort of almost bigger than a community and make it sort of because uh, you know a lot of Guild Wars 2 communities they're sort of just a guild and the guild has a discord and I was wondering what made you want to make the leap from being sort of this uh, these kind of guilds into being sort of this massive uh, influence within the Guild Wars 2 like greater community where we have the website we have video guides we have all this kind of stuff what was the kind of pushing uh, force to make you want to be as as big and expansive as possible with your community. So I've I've always been a fan of um, very well rounded and very complete solutions to problems, um, and that's what that that's the short answer. Pretty much the long answer is is actually Final Fantasy. Uh, actually, um, there's this concept called the Balance Discord. Um, in Final Fantasy, and it is a colossal Discord. I think it's got something like three hundred thousand members, and that you know, there's like a LFG systems. There's you know, you can talk about profession, oh, well, classes, right? Like uh, strategies, rotations, guides, content, everything. Like probably role play, all this kind of crazy stuff, right? And I thought, wow, that's a good idea. I'm gonna 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 take that. Um, yeah, and and I I looked at Guild Wars two and. I thought, huh, there isn't anything like this, is there? Like, there isn't this place where people can go to learn about them. There, there isn't this community in a way. I, I've, I've always kind of felt this a little bit, but uh, it's only recently that I've kind of articulated it and really put it into words. Um, Guild Wars 2 lacks community. There isn't a unifying community. Everything is very fragmented. Everyone's very atomized, right? Like there's no broad community sense, no broad community feeling. That's what I wanted to create. I wanted to create a massive entity where everyone can be welcome. Everyone can join. It's like the place to be to talk about this stuff. It's like the, where do you want to, where do you go if you want to learn about the game? This is where you want to go, right? Where do you, where do you go if you want to figure out how to do this or get into a group or learn how to do content? This is where you want to go. And I think there hasn't been that historically. And, and funnily enough, again, you know, I, I was talking about solutions and problems. I think this is a huge issue within the game. Um, I think the, the inroads to getting into raids, getting into PvP, into world versus world, uh, but uh, not just that, learning how to craft legendaries, learning how your build works or how your abilities work and how to, how to gear your character, right? And, and just learning how the game works. It seems like these structures that are incredibly present, you know, in, in other games, right, um, don't exist in Guild Wars 2. The example I always give is actually classic World of Warcraft. And this, this example is really funny to me because classic WoW is a very easy game, right? Like a lot of the classes only have one or two button rotations, yeah. maximum kind of like three or four. It's not a hard game, right? There's a global cooldown. It's not a hard game, right? The Warrior Discord just warrior which is one class in classic wow i'm actually going to check the numbers on it right now um how many people there are but it was something like seventy five thousand members for just warrior uh, that is pretty big considering uh the hearts of discord currently has twenty five thousand yeah. members yeah and and that dwarfs anything in guild wars 2. in fact it's probably all of the guild wars 2 communities have added together mm. right it is beaten by this one discord and that's crazy to me Guild Wars 2 is really hard, right? Yeah. It, it's a really difficult game. It, it's hard to learn. Um, it really, really is. Um, and the fact that there aren't these big community resources um, for players to learn about the game and um, understand how to get into it and this community sensation where people can share memes and joke around each other and meet people in an MMO, who'd have thought that, right? Yeah. The fact that that no. doesn't exist, it just blew my mind. It's like, what? What are we doing here, right? <laughs> you know? No, oh, absolutely. I think uh, when before I sort of found Hardstuck, well, I mean, I, I sort of trump, I, I, I stumbled onto Hardstuck entirely by mistake. I was looking for, I just started playing the game literally sort of a year ago today, again for the first time in in a very, very long time, and I was like, where the, I want to, I want to do the raids this time. I'd never done the raids, and I was like, where, where the hell do I get into them? And then luckily, I sort of, uh, uh, sort of stumbled into the right person in the aerodrome at the right time you know and then <laughs> they saw oh oh hardstuck just come to hardstuck it's easy we'll teach you how to do everything and then you know sort of i you know escalated the uh hardstuck uh pyramid scheme and now look where i am <laughs> um and so yeah i just think it's amazing what uh what has been built uh 
And how sort of how long has Hardstock been around? So how long has it taken to sort of build to get to this point where we are now? It's been a pretty long time in the making, actually. Um, you know, like when when you're making something like this, and, and I think there have been mistakes mistakes in this regard. Actually, I think that we started out trying to do everything all at once, right? And that that's not not a big brain play, yeah. right? That, it, it definitely slows us down. Um, but hard work has been in the works for I want to say seriously around. Ooh, it's been two years, I think, now, actually, yeah. like where we've been really working on it to get it to this point, like building up our infrastructure, the Discord, the website, um, kind of like our our administrative structure, right? Like the internal stuff that we work on um, to actually get stuff done, right? Get stuff organized, get these guides written. It's been two years. It's been a it's been a busy two years. Yeah. And it, it, I think we're definitely getting to the payoff point now, though, actually, like um, things are really starting to come together. It, it was one of these projects that because we were doing everything at the same time, it was kind of like we were doing 10% of everything, then 20%, then 30%, then 40%. It's kind of all come together, in my opinion, um, all at once over the past kind of three months or so, three or six months, was where everything really kicked into gear because we started to get to that critical mass where the completion point on a lot of our different um, activities and a lot of our different uh, projects have all been completed at the same time. We've been yeah. slowly working on all of them um, for a long time. So, yeah, it's been a, it's been a big one. It's been a big one. So that's kind of where we are right now, right? We we we've reached the mass, you know. We've been kind of, you know, barreling forward, but you know, eventually, where where will it end? You know, what's up next for Hardstock uh, so far? Where do you see us in like a year? You know, a very standard question, but I think a uh, pretty interesting one. The 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 big thing that I want to really hit with um, Hardstock is. Um, just streamlining our, I'm gonna, we're gonna do some corporate speak here. I wanna streamline our operation to the point where we aren't busting our balls um, to get this stuff done, right? I want uh, updating all the builds to be effortless. I wanna say, Lynn, would you like to run a PVP tournament uh, in three weeks time? And you go, yes, I would teapot. That will not be stressful or in any way soul crushing. Uh, it'll be fun. We'll have a good time. And I'll go, ah, oh, that sounds great, Lynn. Let's do that. Let's have some fun. Let's run a tournament. Um, and like, that's the type of experience I want to have, right? I want a lot of the stuff we do now, which is really high effort. You know, I, I was working super hard on getting this overlay sorted, right? For Master of the Arena, um, like yourself, you were building spreadsheets and admin tools, right? We were figuring out how that works. You know, we were kind of teaching built on the job, figuring out custom arenas, like all, all the stuff that, you know, it, you know, it, ideally you'd have figured out like way before the actual event, right? So you don't have to really worry about it too much. Um, I want all of that stuff in place. So we're able to very smoothly produce uh, more content. And other than that, I just want to grow, right? We want to build up our team of organizers. So we have more in-game events, like more training, more educational tools, like content on YouTube. And this is the start of our YouTube adventure, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, you know, I really um, would love to see, I, I have this idea of this kind of communal YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Like where everyone's, uh, everyone, you know, is working together and collaborating, right? It's something that I feel very strongly about in content creation is that it should be collaborative. I think it's something that, um, particularly in Guild Wars 2, we don't do a very good job of, right? If you look at the top streamers, what do they do? They're on each other's streams all the time. They're on Discord with each other all the time, right? You know what I mean? Uh, and this is something that I think Guild Wars 2 lacks a lot. There needs to be way more collaboration, you know, and I think this idea of, uh, again, having this, uh, the hard suck channel as uh, something where we can show off creators, we can meet up with creators, we can collaborate with creators uh, and share a lot of content that we as the team worked on uh, together in, in a communal fashion. This is very exciting, right? Mm. And that's something that I really want to hit on. And of course, this is the first iteration. I've been super excited to get something like this going, like a, a regular uh, podcast, introducing people to the team, right? And yeah. building that connection with the community, with the Hard Suck podcast. It's fantastic, right? Like this, what you're seeing now is what I want to see going forwards, right? Like we yeah. are absolutely um, lasering in on the, the vision for what Hard Suck is. Very exciting. I'm excited. I get excited just thinking about uh, where we can go next with uh, this whole massive operation. I'm very excited. Yeah. The, uh, you know, sky's the limit uh, with this sort of situation. Um, I'm looking at the time because, uh, you know, we are busy bees. We also have a meeting after this, which is kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Five minutes, to be yeah. precise. Yeah, five Discussing minutes. the Steam yeah. release. Quick, quick, quiet question. What is your plan for the Steam release, t -Bot? Let's go. Steam release. It's a good question. 
Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in the trenches, in the starter zones. I'm gonna be helping people. We're gonna be playing the game, answering questions, maybe giving out a few care packages. So you know, some 18 slot bags to the new friends, maybe you know, a little bit of that here and there. You know, showing people the ropes, answering questions, giving some advice, right? Um, just you know, being making it a cozy experience, right? Like Guild Wars 2 can definitely be. Um, it can be a game that can be a little bit difficult to get into, but to be a bit, bit to get used to, right? It's different to a lot of conventional MMOs. So kind of easing that transition um, and making things a little uh, a little simpler and a lot of fun, right? Um, for new players is definitely what we're going to be doing uh, on Steam release. Uh, and yeah, I'll also be grinding a lot of guide content. Otherwise, Choco Epic is going to, he's going to skin me alive, right? Um, you know, it, it's not, and you don't want to see that, right? That's not good. Um, it, that's inappropriate for Twitch as well. <laughs> so a lot of work to be done there. Yeah, certainly a lot of like new player outreach uh, and just like helping players like learn the ropes of the game and, and trying to like uh, really generate a lot of uh, a lot of excitement around the game and getting players engaged. Uh, and a another big thing I want to do actually, um, hopefully around Steam or near Steam, is going to be trying to encourage a lot of existing players to take up uh, leadership roles. Mm. Uh, and I don't mean like, oh, you're going to have to be a guild master, make your own guild. No, just um, basically just leading stuff, like tagging up maybe. Um, or doing stuff like making groups, right? Like um, hopefully gaining knowledge that they can then share to other players. I want to do something that I'm uh, called the commander challenge, right? I'm going to it's like a big competition where uh, people have to lead squads and whoever leads the most squads, um, you know, gets like a big reward, right? Yeah. Like some legendary weapons or something like that. Khalid is going to hook me up with some legendary. It's going to be great. Um, you know, we'll get some stuff in there. We're going to encourage people to take up arms. We're going to get some guides, some content, so players feel comfortable in leading squads, leading content, building groups, right? Understanding how all the professions fit together and so on. Because um, I think that's what the game is really lacking, and I think that's actually going to be a, a potential issue um, with new players coming in. Because obviously, new players don't necessarily want to lead, right? That's not something you want to do day one, right? You, you want to, you know, kind of learn from other players. But I think there's actually something that's very lacking in the Guild Wars 2 community is players who can teach, players who have the knowledge and the ability to show other players the ropes. So I really want to encourage players to learn, give them the resources to learn, uh, so that our existing player base is prepared to actually accommodate the huge amount of players moving into the game. Because anyone who's ever led raid training or any group knows that the supply is nothing compared to demand. A lot of people want to raid and do strike missions and play World of War and play PvP, but not a lot of people uh, want to lead it or are equipped to lead this content. So that's going to be the, the big issue that I'm going to try and tackle uh, before or around the Steam release. Awesome. I'm excited. Let's make it happen, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think that kind of concludes this first premiere episode of the uh, Hard Spank Oof. podcast. Oh, Amazing. Man. I've had fun. Very interesting to get to know you a bit more, Teapot. It's very uh, interesting. And thank you, Lynn, for helping me interrogate the man behind it all. I appreciate it. So, Mighty Teapot, if they don't know where to find you, where can they find you? Well, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Mighty Teapot, YouTube slash Mighty Teapot, Twitter slash Mighty Teapot. Of course, you're also going to be find, you know, find my work on the amazing Discord of uh, discord.gg forward slash hardstuck. And you definitely want to check out, of course, hardstuck.gg, the website as well for all of our content and all of our activities. Stay up to date. Look at our calendar. Go check it out. Do the same in the Discord. It's going to be fantastic. But yeah, you can follow me. You know, you get in there, watch all my videos, watch all my content or not. It's up to you. Or not. And Lynn, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me anywhere, really. I don't stream. I don't do, do really do anything. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an admin. I'm an admin for, mm -hmm. for events, right? I'm, I'm in the shadows. You know, I'm actually, you know, this is not even me. This is just, uh, it's actually a snap cam, right? Yeah. Not actually me. Now, uh, where can you find me? I, uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I think uh, uh, twittercom slash Uh That's probably where you can find me. Um, and th that's pretty much the only thing I, I really, you know, I really show up. You can you can follow me there. I, I I don't have hot takes. I post pictures of my dog. Funnily enough, uh, my dog's pretty cute. So yeah, you can look at dog pictures. Awesome. Well, thank you both, and uh, to people watching this on YouTube, we'll see you very very shortly. See you then. Uh, bye bye.